will now begin this commencement ceremony in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As we begin this day that marks it ending, we wish to thank you, Lord, for the many graces you have poured on our school community through the lives of these young people. They and their families have been strong links in the communion of joy we strive to foster every day. We thank you for our teachers and administrators who have been your instruments in leading these young men and women with bonds of love. We praise you, Lord, because you give us the gift of faith that we, may, we many know you, a desire of our minds and hearts. We praise you because you give us the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that we may not only make good decisions, but to be guided by divine wisdom. We praise you because you are the good itself, and good always tends towards generosity. You teach us through your Son that the magnanimous person must be willing to embrace the cross, and yet we know that these are crosses with Christ. We ask you to bless our commencement ceremony that we now begin. May this moment be a source of consolation for all the hard work over the years, and may today be a springboard into an ever deeper friendship with your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Good morning and welcome to all our guests, but most especially to Holy Spirit Preps graduating class of 2021. I want to begin by congratulating this wonderful class for being so cooperative and joyful since the beginning of the pandemic in March of 2020. I also want to take this opportunity to celebrate those of you who tried your best to live up to the example of Christ by being kind, loving, supportive, and accepting of others, especially your peers, and those who earned their grades no matter what they were, without taking any shortcuts. You might not be recognized here today, but you are known and you are appreciated. G.K. Chesterton, the English poet, philosopher, orator, and theologian once said, when men don't believe in God, they don't believe in nothing, they believe in anything. Look at our society today. It seems like Chesterton was a prophet. However, the great news for each of you is the one most important truth you should know as a graduate of Holy Spirit Prep. You are a child of God, created in his likeness and image. He loves you infinitely. And there's nothing you can ever do to change that. Do your best to love him back and to foster a deep and meaningful friendship with him. Strive to do this and you will find true happiness in your life. Congratulations, dear graduates. You will always be a part of this Holy Spirit Prep family. We love you and we will always remain, you will always remain in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Good morning, Monsignor, board members, administrators, faculty, family and friends, both near and far, and fellow graduates. I am honored to welcome you to this year's commencement ceremony. We are soon to be alumni of HSP and will carry our personal and academic formation with us into the next chapter of our lives. For 16 years, I have been privileged enough to be a part of this community, and I will be forever grateful for the role Holy Spirit Prep played in raising me and helping me develop, not only academically, but more importantly, spiritually. We would be mistaken if we thought that this ceremony is solely a celebration for us, the graduates. Instead, it is also a celebration of our parents, our teachers, and mentors who have guided us along the way. 
Our school motto echoes the words of St. Matthew's Gospel. Whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. I, like my classmates, have embraced this philosophy in all aspects of our formation during our time at HSP. HSP academics have consistently challenged my limits and helped me grow in my discipline and confidence, both of which have shaped my academic performance tremendously. From learning to spell my name in pre-K-2 to mastering Riemann sums in AP Calculus, this school has always helped me perform at my highest capacity, and none of it would have been possible without the incredible support from my teachers, mentors, and parents along the way. Recently, I realized much of my personal success stems from my faith, and I have been blessed that HSP teaches and forms its students in their faith. Looking back at my time at HSP, faith has been a priority, the foundation, in my education and personal growth, contributing to my success. The virtues I have developed have exemplified servant leadership and the importance of faith as a part of daily life. The people who have always encouraged me to live my faith have been my mom and dad. Thank you for supporting me in everything I do. Thank you for all the sacrifices you have made for me. Mom, thank you for being my math tutor since kindergarten. And even though you could only offer me moral support in AP Calc, I still appreciate it. Dad, thanks for having a great sense of humor, making me laugh, laughing at my jokes, letting me participate in your theology class assessments, and giving me lots of advice. Both of you have taught me so much and shown me what it means to be compassionate, strong, humble, and faithful. Josh and Luke, thank you for reminding me that I'm the shortest person in the family. <laughs> Even though I will have you know, I am three inches above the national average height and at least six inches in heels. Annalise, my favorite sister, thank you for driving to school with me for the past two years. I know that it probably took a lot out of you because it definitely took a lot out of me. <laughs> You're a pretty good DJ and a phenomenal backseat driver. Ava, my favorite neighbor, you have been like another sister to me since first grade. Thank you for all the magic mermaid memories. I know you and Annalise are going to miss me when I move a whole 25 minutes away to college. I'll miss you guys, too. To the Cabreras, thank you for being my second family and making Halloween, Christmas Eve, and Easter my favorite times of the year. Mr. Dasta, thank you for being a great soccer coach and mentor. Soccer has been one of my greatest sources of joy over the past four years. I hope you never forget the proud moment when I got a yellow card, and I will appreciate the virtues soccer instilled in me, like making me play center back all season, even though I didn't want to. Father Juan, thank you for your guidance in my faith. I will always remember the lessons in your homilies and will be eternally impressed when you once related Nerf guns and baby pools to a gospel passage. Even though you ghosted the leaders for two weeks, thank you for the experience of planning Kairos. The experience proved to me my leadership capabilities, and I now have a deep appreciation for the beauty of retreats, but also the stress and chaos of planning and dealing with uncooperative high school boys. To all our teachers who have unceasingly guided us academically, spiritually, and personally, thank you for your dedication over the past four years. Your examples of compassion, leadership, and faith have profoundly impacted us and shaped us into the young men and women we are today. Despite the knowledge we have gained over the past four years, we graduates still have a lot to learn. We've spent countless hours discussing the Lord of the Flies from the singular analysis of Simon as a Christ-like figure. Singing the 50 state song we learned in third grade, arguing about water being wet, and using the solve function on our calculators during math tests. Thank you also for the memories like singing Yes, I Believe at lower school masses, going on field trips like New Echota with lots of questions and loud hands because we've never been good at silent raised hands, and all of physics class with Peppa, Needless to say, we have made many memories together, and I want to thank all of you for making our high school experience everything it was. Even though COVID threatened our senior year and things were a little different, it is such a blessing to be here graduating together with our families, friends, and loved ones present. I know that we are ready to graduate, some ready to run out those doors with your diploma and never look back. 
Whether you walk or run through those doors, you will be taking the light of Christ with you. The example of servant leadership that has been instilled in all of you. Never doubt your intelligence and talents as we embark on the next chapter of our lives. We've run the gauntlet that is high school, and lo and behold, we came out the other side a little smarter and much more better than when we entered. (laughs) Now, let's get on with this graduation. We've been waiting for too long. Congratulations, class of 2021. Good morning, friends and family of Holy Spirit Preparatory School. My name is Michael Cabrera, and I'm honored to stand before you today representing those students who, like me, have attended Holy Spirit Prep since preschool and kindergarten, the lifers. Joining me as lifers are Peyton Devine, Madalena Jones, Leah Krupsak, Alexa Lambert, Sophia Oliver, Alex Platy, Patrick Adosta, and Christian Rubio. We've attended classes together, played sports together, and prayed together for well over a decade forming us into the strong men and women we are today. Holy Spirit has helped me gain everlasting friendships, a deeper understanding of my faith, and courage to face the undiscovered future. I speak for all the lifers when I say that we're proud to have been a part of this family, and together we look forward to starting this new chapter of our lives. It is an honor and privilege, as representative of the longest tenured students, to present our commencement speaker, Mr. Frank Hanna, a founder of Holy Spirit Prep and a board member since the school's inception in 1996. Mr. Hanna is the CEO of Hanna Capital and has invested in emerging technologies for the last 32 years. He is a renowned public speaker regarding macroeconomics, education, and philanthropy, and has been featured in the PBS documentary, The Call of the Entrepreneur. He is also the author of two best-selling books, What Your Money Means and A Graduate's Guide to Life. Mr. Hanna is the founder of the Solidarity Association, which serves as trustee of the Matra Verbi, Hanna Papyrus Trust. The Solidarity Association safeguards the world's oldest copy of the Gospel of Luke, including the oldest copy of the Lord's Prayer in the Vatican Apostolic Library. Our speaker has received multiple awards for philanthropic leadership. He is also a Knight of Malta of the Holy Sepulchre and was named a Knight of the Grand Cross of the Order of St. Gregory by Pope Benedict XVI. Deeply involved in education for the past 39 years, Mr. Hanna has been instrumental in the development and the success of Holy Spirit Prep. Our featured speaker received his BBA and JD degrees from the University of Georgia. His daughter, Elizabeth, attended Holy Spirit Prep for 12 years and graduated in 2008. He and his wife, Mrs. Sally Hanna, embody a spirit of joyful giving, a spirit which conveys a true greatness of the soul. The student body owes them a debt of gratitude for their generosity. But more importantly, the Holy Spirit family owes them a thank you for their faithful example. Thank you for being such faithful witnesses and a role model to the student body and Holy Spirit family. Thank you for everything you've done for us over the past years. Please be assured of our continued prayers for you and your family. On Holy Spirit Prep's 25th anniversary, it is our privilege to present Mr. Hanna as this year's commencement speaker for the class of 2021. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you, Sophia. Um, thank you, Bishop Ned Schlesinger, for being with us, Monsignor Dillon, Dr. Lyndon Kugel, Father Juan. There's so many people who are part of uh, this beautiful communion of joy that is Holy Spirit Preparatory School. And I'm grateful to be here uh, to speak on our silver anniversary of our wonderful school. Today's a joyful day. You've made many sacrifices to get to this day. And there have also been many others who've made sacrifices for you to be here. This school didn't just happen, and your being here didn't just happen. God has had a plan. And he has a plan for your future. 
And that's what I want to talk to you about for just a few minutes today. As I prepared for today, I thought back to my own high school graduation many years ago. I don't know what each of you graduates are thinking right now, but I can tell you the dominant thought that was in my mind as I graduated. Freedom. Freedom. I can't tell you how much I was in love with the idea of being independent. And don't get me wrong, I, I was blessed with two loving parents and a wonderful home and childhood. But boy, did I ever look forward to my freedom and independence. I hope you're looking forward to yours too. I hope you are looking forward, maybe even with a little bit of nervousness, to your looming adulthood. You are all children of God, and you're still your parents' children, but you're not children in the world. You're adults, and you will have freedom and independence. So here's one of the two things that I hope you remember from my talk today. God has given you your freedom and independence for one reason and one reason alone. And that reason is so that you can choose what you are going to be attached to. That's it. That's the only reason for your freedom. You've been given freedom so that you can decide what you are going to give it up for. And God and I and your parents are hoping that you will give up your freedom for the right things. Because here's what I've found. We all give up our freedom to someone or something. We can't exist otherwise. I believe we live in the greatest country on earth. I love my country. But we have elements in our culture that are misguided. And one of those misguided beliefs is that freedom is the end for which we are made. Freedom is necessary for human beings. Freedom is a gift from God. But freedom is not an end unto itself. Instead, we have freedom so that we can choose that to which we will be attached. We have freedom so that we can choose what we're going to love. For you graduates, if you are like I was when I was in your shoes, you're filled with adrenaline at the idea that you will get to decide more things for yourself rather than having others decide for you. And guess what? I want you to be exhilarated by that prospect. I want you to be excited about your freedom. I want you to be exhilarated and excited because freedom is a wonderful gift. So embrace it. But, 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 know that you are going to give up your independence to something or someone. And so here's what I want you thinking about. To whom or to what are you going to get attached and then grow to love? Now, because we're here to celebrate our graduates, I'm not going to pick on them. I'm going to point out to them some of the things that the rest of us mistakenly choose to attach ourselves to, and thereby we grow to love them. We attach ourselves and then learn to love our phones. Sometimes they're more important to us than anything else that's going on. We attach ourselves to and learn to love our professional reputations. We attach ourselves to and learn to love what our friends think of us. We attach to and love what our coworkers think about us. We attach to and love how many people we have as friends on Facebook or how many see our posts on Instagram. We attach to and love our me time. We attach to and love our travels or our adventures. We attach to and love our comfort and dare not anyone disturb it. We might also attach ourselves and love alcohol, recreational drugs, too much television, too much internet, too much vulgar and violent television and internet. We might attach ourselves and love to gossip. We might attach and love to judge the intentions and motivations of others. And we might attach ourselves to FOMO. For those of you who don't know, FOMO is an acronym that stands for fear of missing out. In this age of interconnection, how much of our lives are attached to FOMO? And in the end, what we attach ourselves to, what we love, becomes what we worship. 
There's a reason the first commandment that God gave to Moses is the first commandment. In that commandment, God tells Moses that we are to love God first, and he is to be the only thing we worship. Because here's what God knew. And he knew this because he made us. He knew that he made us with a hunger to attach and love and worship. He also knew that the only way we could actually attach love and worship was if we could choose with our freedom to do so. But he also knew we would have other temptations. So that's why he gave us the first commandment. These days I kind of chuckle when someone tells me that they are spiritual but not religious. They often say it as if they've reached some stage of independent transcendence. They'll say that they're not interested in religion with all of its rules. And I smile because I've never met anyone who is not religious. Religion is essentially the way each of us decides with our own freedom how we're going to live our lives and what we're going to worship. Everyone I have ever met has a code by which they have decided to live their lives. And for them, this code of behavior is essentially their religion. I have friends who tell me they don't go to church on Sunday morning as they feel God is out in nature. And they're closer to him when they play golf on Sunday morning rather than going to church. I get it. They don't want to miss a weekly golf game. We all choose a God we will worship and sacrifice for. We all use our freedom to pick that to which we will attach, love, and come to worship. By the way, I love to play golf too. And that's why I have to make sure I don't get too attached to it. But the main point I want to make to you graduates is this. You are now an adult with freedom. You will have a religion. You will give your independence to something or someone. Don't kid yourselves. So given that you will give away your independence, think about who or what you will give it to. If you choose to attach to God and to a future spouse and to friendship with other good people, you will have attached to that which will bring you lasting happiness. If you choose to attach yourself to the things of this world, you're likely to be pretty deeply disappointed over time. But don't forget, you will love and worship something. Make sure you choose wisely. Now, that's the main point I want to make to you today. And now I want to make a gentle suggestion. As to friendships and associations and attachments, you will have many opportunities in the next few years. When I was a freshman in college, among other things, I joined a fraternity. I'm glad I did. I formed up many deep and lasting friendships there. But today I want to tell you about another sort of fraternity to which I belong and to which I would like to invite all of you. This group, oddly enough, meets right out in the open, but it's still something of a secret. They don't exactly have a secret handshake, but they sort of recognize one another. I've been to chapter meetings of this group all over the globe. In Paris, the meeting was in the basement of a very large building near the Louvre. In the Philippines, it was actually in the middle, if you can believe it, of an open-air shopping mall at 5 in the afternoon. In Rome, Italy, there was a meeting of this group in the catacombs underground uh, in Rome. In New York City, I go at 7.30 in the morning on Fifth Avenue. Every day of the year, you can find a meeting of this group on every continent, maybe other than Antarctica. But in every continent and every country, I've been in Mumbai, India. I've been among native people in New Zealand and in almost every state in this country. Every day, there are more than 10,000 places around the world where this group meets. Some of you may have guessed what I'm speaking about. I'm talking about daily Catholic mass. Now, I know some of you, maybe, maybe many of you in the audience may be thinking, Daily Mass? Isn't that for religious zealots? I barely want to go once a week. Who would choose to go daily? But I want to tell you all a quick story, especially you graduates. My wife's been getting treatment for cancer in Rochester, Minnesota. A few weeks ago, we were there for some surgery for her. 
And I wanted to go to Mass that morning to pray for her and be close to God. Now, I've already told you I've been to daily Mass from India to New Zealand to Paris. But this particular day on a cold morning in Minnesota, something struck me during Mass. I had had trouble finding the church, so I walked in about five minutes late, and I sat down the pew halfway back in the aisle. And as I, I came in there and sat among these people, I realized no one asked me for a ticket. No one asked me whether I belonged. No one asked if I'd made a reservation. I was a thousand miles from my home and a total stranger to everyone there. And I was able to walk in and act like I belonged because I did belong. And all the native folks from Rochester welcomed me like I was one of them. When it came time for Holy Communion, I walked up with everyone else and put Jesus into my body. And at the end of Mass, I thought to myself, do you realize, I was saying this to myself, do you realize how extraordinary this is? Do you know how many places in the world you can just show up as a stranger, late, unannounced, unexpected, and be treated like you belong there? And at, the, at that moment, because I'd been asked to, to do this talk, and I thought, you should share this joy with others and not just hope that somehow they'll learn about it one day. Not everyone knows about daily mass. Not everyone knows that you can just show up wherever you are and be welcomed. So I'm telling you this because we all need a home. And most of you graduates will be leaving yours. But you still need a home. And you will still have the home you live in now that you can come back to. But when you're not near your family home, I want you to know that you have another home wherever you may be. We Catholics speak of Mother Church because the church is indeed our mother who cares for us. I'm not telling you that you need to go to Mass every day. That's not what the church teaches, and that's not what I'm telling you. What I am telling you is that when you need a home, when you are lonely, when you are depressed, when you feel forgotten, when you feel rejected, when you need a mother, when you need to be around others who are praying to God and will pray alongside you, you have a standing invitation from the body of Christ to go to daily mass wherever you may be. It's interesting. Daily mass is pretty much the same, but in a way different from Sunday mass. St. Paul referred to believing Christians as the body of Christ. We're all parts of the same body, and what affects one of us affects all of us. I'll tell you something. When you go to daily Mass, you can really sense you're part of the body of Christ. When you go to daily Mass, you see people who are there not because they have to be. They're there because they want to be. A daily Mass only takes 25 to 30 minutes. In New York at St. Patrick's Cathedral, there are people all over the world gathering in the early morning, quietly in a beautiful communion together. Back before Uber existed, when I was traveling, I would take a taxi from my hotel to whichever parish I could find nearby for the daily mass. My challenge came after mass because a lot of these churches are in places where there aren't any taxis. So my task was to approach someone who I'd seen at mass and ask if they would give me a ride back to my hotel. I always, always found someone who would give me a ride because I was at my home away from home among the body of Christ. So as you head into adulthood and leave your homes, you don't have to be invincible. We're all weak and we all get lonely and we all need a home and we all need a mother. So when you have this need, don't forget to look for the nearest Catholic church. You can be part of the body of Christ and walk right in and be welcomed. As I said earlier, be mindful and think about what you're going to attach yourself to. And when in doubt, remember and reflect on the faith that has been taught to you at Holy Spirit Prep. This school exists for a reason, to teach you how to be happy in this world and in the next. This school was designed to help make you whole and complete. God has special plans for you. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are very, 
very special. The people here today love you very, very much. Do not ever forget this. Cling to it and rely on it. You are forever a part of us, and we are a part of you. I don't know all of you here personally, but I'm going to take the list of graduates home with me. And when I go to bed tonight, I'll pray for each of you. And I'll ask Mary and Joseph to pray for you, too. And I'm going to ask that you pray tonight for those you love. As you leave here, know that all of us wish for you the happiness that God intends for you. Be mindful of what you attach to, what you grow to love, and what you worship. God bless you, and thank you. Graduating seniors, would you stand, please? And now I have the pleasure of addressing you not as graduating seniors, but as alumni. Quando venistis alumni in nudum nostrum, vobus redebatur candela, ad lumen vestrum similarit, hoc die festali, educazione vestra confecta in alda nostra, nos omnes amici, Familiae, magistri, sacerdotes, collegi, e spiritus sancti, vos metimus in orbem terrarum cum candelis vestris, obstetantes mandatum domini nostri, sic nuciat lux vestra, corum hominibus, ud vidiat vestra bona opera, et glorificent patrum vestrum, qui in celis est. Ite, digitur, ad illuminandum orbem terrarum per nobilia opera futura et dominus vos semper benedicat. Now please move your tassel, tassels from right to left. And congratulations, you are now graduated. As we prepare for the conferral of diplomas, we ask that you kindly hold your applause until the end. Ainsley Jane Hillman, Valedictorian, Order of Gownsmen, Graduating with Distinction, Latin Scholar, Math Scholar, English Scholar, Theology Scholar, Scholar Athlete, Girl Scout Gold Award. Sophia Beatrice Oliver, Salutatorian, Order of Gownsmen. House of Trent President, Scholar Athlete, Senior Athlete of the Year, HSP Cougar Athlete of the Year. Hector Alexis Padilla, Head Boy, 
scholar, athlete. Jerong Lee, head girl, order of gownsman, science scholar, scholar athlete, star student. Allison Marie Benedict. Callie Brooke Bond. Michael Anthony Cabrera. House of Nicaea Vice President, Scholar Athlete, Senior Athlete of the Year, HSP Cougar Athlete of the Year. Randolph Greer Campbell. Bradley Michael Casillo. Olivia Ray Santola. Haley Rose Chin Glover. Charles Maxwell Cohen. Sarah Kathleen Cole. Benjamin Daniel Cumby, House of Leon Vice President, Scholar Athlete.
Sarah Warren Davidson. Hayden Helene Devine, Order of Gownsmen, House of Chalcedon President, Girl Scout Gold Award, Scholar Athlete. Natalie Grace Didier. Anne Berryman Fox, House of Leon President, Scholar Athlete. Victoria Marie Grantham. Scholar, athlete. Samantha Marie Gregory, House of Nicaea President. McCarthy Davis Harlow. Genevieve Isabella in Salaka. Madalena Rose Jones, Girl Scout Gold Award. Olivia Rose Jones, Scholar Athlete. Leah Isabel Krupsack, Scholar Athlete.
Hilberto Lajara. Alexa Rose Lambert. Jackson Rush Lehman, Eagle Scout. Virginia Claire Lehman, Girl Scout Gold Award. Alejandro Javier Mata. Catherine Grace Moran. Andres Felipe Mercia. Natalie Therese Olson. Alexander Mitchell Platty. Ashley Christine Provost. Patrick Ryan Radasta, House of Chalcedon Vice President. Juan Christian Rubio. Classics Scholar, Greek Scholar. (laughs) 
Ernesto Daniel Ruiz, House of Trent Vice President. Dominic Felipe Sanchez. Marie Sautre. Scholar, athlete. Kaylee Jane Turpin, scholar, athlete. Bradley Rivers Tyre Jones. Robert Samuel Williams. Please join me in congratulating the class of 2021. Alumni, when you came into our school, a candle was given to you in order that it might represent the light of your life. On this special day, with your education having been completed within our walls, we all, friends, families, teachers, priests of Holy Spirit Preparatory School, send you into the world with candles bearing witness to the command of our Lord. Let your light shine openly for all in such a way that they see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Go, therefore, to illuminate the whole world through noble acts you will perform. And may the Lord bless you always.
Good morning, and thank you all for being here. Our class, the Holy Spirit graduating class of 2021, has, in the past year, seen more examples of people living by the school motto, ministrare non ministrare, or in English, to serve and not to be served, than perhaps in our entire lifetime. On behalf of the class of HSP, I'd like to thank those people who live their lives serving others in God. To the church and Monsignor Dillon, for giving every student the opportunity to grow in their faith and for ensuring that our Catholic education exists beyond simply the classroom. Thank you. To the Board of Directors for providing guidance and support to our school leaders, for making this year of in-person learning possible, and for promoting the best interests of our students. Thank you. To Dr. Linda Kugel and the administration for pushing through the hardships of the pandemic to give us a fantastic school year. Thank you to the exceptional faculty and staff for growing with us these past four years, for giving their all to provide us with a phenomenal education, and for working tirelessly to imbue the values of faith, prudence, and magnanimity within our school community. Thank you. To our parents for supporting each and every one of us in all of our endeavors, and for pushing us to always do our best. Thank you. To our siblings, friends, peers, and to you all, the class of 2021, for lifting each other up at our highs, for cheering each other on at our lows, wait, other way around, (laughs) for lifting each other up at our lows, for cheering each other on at our highs, and for being a true second family. Thank you. Thank you for your positive example of showing us what it means to serve others and live in God's love. And you, my friends and classmates, congratulations to each of you. We did it. We've graduated. My name is Ainsley Hillman, and I'm honored and humbled to be giving this year's valedictorian speech. As I sat down to write this speech, I found myself procrastinating, not because I didn't have a lot to say, but because I wanted it to be honest and impactful. And to be candid, I was struggling with my fears for this Friday. These fears included first, falling or tripping at any point whatsoever during the graduation, second, looking ridiculous in my cap, third, freezing during the speech due to my aversion for public speaking, and fourth, that my speech will be full of the generic platitudes found in every other valedictorian speech ever. I thank the Lord that I've conquered the first three, and I suppose each of you will have to decide the fourth. I will begin by acknowledging that we are all sick and tired of the phrase, these are unprecedented times. Yet at the same time, they really are. And to me, that's what makes this graduation and our collective accomplishments all the more extraordinary. There are high school students across the country, across the world for that matter, who have not set foot in a school building in over a year. There are students whose entire senior year lacked personal instruction team sports, extracurriculars, and special events. We are extraordinarily fortunate to be a part of this community. We are fortunate that our church, our school, and our families did not back down from the challenge of creating the best senior year that they could. If not for their work, we might not have been able to have a homecoming, prom, and graduation. So again, on behalf of all of my classmates, I thank you all for making that possible and congratulate each of you on this remarkable achievement. Blessed Basil of Moreau is noted for saying that we shall always place education side by side with instruction. The mind will not be cultivated at the expense of the heart. When I first heard this quote, I did not truly appreciate its application within my own life. Yet now, standing here before you all and looking back on the past four years, I see it very clearly. Our education at Holy Spirit Prep was about more than feeding our minds. It was just as much about nurturing our hearts and souls. It was not just about creating educated students. It was about creating good people, focused on using their God-given talents to help others, ministrare and non-ministrare. As we move on to our next great adventure, wherever it may be, we must remember to never forsake matters of the heart for educational or material success. Our relationships and passion for service should never come second to an academic, athletic, artistic, or other achievement. I have a little experience in this arena. In middle school, I raced through grades and activities to get into a good high school. And in high school, it was all about getting into college. In many ways, my life was focused on the next destination. And as one might expect, at the end of my junior year, I was mentally and physically exhausted. For the sake of academics, extracurriculars, and all that I needed to accomplish to get to the next destination, I'd forgotten to enjoy the ride. Everything, family, friends, and at times even my faith was secondary to a goal. I'd allowed my mind to be cultivated at the expense of my heart. 
And just when it felt as though I was losing my grip and my strength for change, COVID-19 washed over the entire world and upended just about everything. With the benefit of the quiet months of quarantine, I, like many of you, made the choice to shift my focus back to God, family, and those who matter most in my life. I began to actively seek out time to appreciate the journey and those who travel it with me. I redoubled my efforts to live as a servant leader and embrace our school motto. Appreciate the time you have left with your high school friends. Remind your family how much you love them and thank your teachers and coaches for their hard work and inspiration. Remember as you move on to college to feed your heart and soul. Do not allow the pursuit of achievement to overshadow your commitment to the relationships that sustain you and the community that you are called to serve. Your talent is God's gift to you and what you do with it is your gift to God. As a part of the admissions process for the University of Notre Dame, go Irish, I had to write an essay on what God and the Good Life meant to me. The prompt comes from an interdisciplinary course called God and the Good Life, which asks students to consider moral questions about what they believe and how they want to live their lives. It was a weighty question, and I had a generous 250 words to try and answer it. I looked everywhere for inspiration. I asked my parents. I sought the advice of teachers, such as Mr. Rose and Mr. Rieger. I asked my peers and even my younger siblings what they thought the phrase God and the Good Life meant. And though each person had their own individual interpretation, there was one universal theme. Strength is found in service and giving. Bishop Barron once said, your being increases in the measure that you give it away. Interestingly, I'm aware of absolutely nothing in the physical world that grows stronger by giving. For example, steel grows stronger by taking more carbon, solutions become more concentrated by receiving additional salute, and people are made physically stronger by increasing their cardiovascular and strength training. However, the human soul is different. The soul grows stronger by giving, and thus the single natural anomaly, the human soul, made stronger when we are kind, when we are generous, and when we are grateful. The happiest and most fulfilling times in my own life were those in which my efforts were focused on others. The corollary is also true. The times when I was most unhappy and unsatisfied in my life were those in where I was primarily focused on myself. The good life is one lived in accordance with God's call for us to serve others. And in our service to others, we find a life centered on gratitude, fostering happiness and ultimately creating a better world. Guided by God's call to service and to treat our neighbors as ourselves, we will all find a good life. Our class has seen fantastic examples of people living by God in the good life. We saw our parents band together to organize FOCO, prom, and our senior trip, none of which would have been possible without them. Our teachers and school leadership worked through the challenges of our time to provide us with the best senior year experience possible. It took strength to be one of the few outliers in the Atlanta school community who are full-time, in-person, arts and athletics included. As friends and classmates, we've lifted and supported each other this year in amazing ways, sharing in each other's successes. In doing these things, each of you were servant leaders. By showing each other and the world what it means to serve others and live in the image of Christ, you prove to yourselves and each other what it means to live by God in the good life. As we move on to our next adventure, diploma in hand and bags packed for college, I challenge you to draw on your faith. I challenge you to personally discover what God in the good life means to you. As I mentioned, there was a bit of procrastinating and late-night searches for that special inspirational spark that preceded my remarks today. As a part of that process, I stumbled across Conan O'Brien's 2011 Dartmouth commencement speech, and I read the entire thing. May I just say he's hysterical. Nearly the entire speech was a roast of Dartmouth, mocking their school motto, their fictional alumni such as Meredith Gray and Pete Campbell, and even the university president in only a way that Conan O'Brien could pull off. Yet somehow, by the end of his epic roast, he managed to leave the Dartmouth graduating class with a lesson that most people require a lifetime to learn. He said, there are few things more liberating in this life than having your worst fear realized. But today I tell you that whether you fear it or not, disappointment will come. The beauty is that through disappointment you can gain clarity, and with clarity comes conviction and true originality. Work hard, be kind, and amazing things will happen. Friends and classmates, today we step into the real world. No more training wheels, booster seats, or handrails. Not one of us is guaranteed tomorrow, and much less an easy ride. Failure will come, and God will guide you through it. Know that there is beauty in the disappointments and failures that you will face. Though we might physically appear no different than the millions of other high school graduates in America, we have one great advantage. 
our time at Holy Spirit Prep. Over the past four years, and even longer for many of you, we have been taught not only the benefits of hard work, but the equal importance of kindness and service to others, regardless of how many disappointments we might encounter. Draw on the strength of that experience when you face disappointment. Remember that God did not create you to live depressed, defeated, guilty, ashamed, or unworthy. You were created in the, in the image of God. You were created to be victorious. When challenge comes, lift your eyes to heaven and your hearts in prayer. And then go serve someone who has had even greater struggles. Serve others and you will find your purpose again. Serve others and you will find your way to living by God in the good life. Thank you.